Outbound trajectory correction burn was completed successfully this morning at 1.44 a.m. Eastern Time. As I mentioned, Orion continues to grow closer to the moon. We are now only 7,166 miles away. That's a change of 100 miles since our first check-in this morning. You can track Orion's uh, place in the flight all throughout at nasa.gov slash track Artemis. As we grow closer to the moon, of course, we continue to distance ourselves from Earth, now over 233 thousand four hundred and twenty nine miles away Orion traveling at 415 miles per hour When Orion conducts the outbound powered flyby burn this morning, it will propel it, uh, it will change the delta velocity by 586 feet per second. This is a two minute and 30 second burn. That's longer in comparison to some of those uh, OTC burns we're seeing, which last typically 30 seconds or less. Again, you're looking at, obviously, a live view of our closest celestial neighbor, the moon, as Orion continues to grow closer for its closest approach this morning. The outbound powered flyby burn will begin at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 7.44. Uh, the closest approach itself will happen at about 7.57. We'll be about 80 miles above the lunar surface. The outbound powered flyby is the first of a pair of maneuvers that's required to enter a distant retrograde orbit around the moon. The second will be the distant retrograde insertion maneuver. Distant retrograde insertion will happen on Friday. It's currently slated for uh, coverage to begin at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time for distant retrograde insertion itself to occur at 4.52 p.m. Just yesterday, we entered the lunar sphere of influence at 2.09 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll remain in that sphere of influence, meaning 
uh, uh, the moon has the greatest gravitational pull on Orion until we prepare for distant retrograde insertion. So we anticipate uh, to exit the gravitational sphere of influence of the moon on Thursday, November 24th. As the moon continues to grow larger in the frame of view, Orion is now less than 7,000 miles away, approximately 6,914 miles away from the moon. This animation, again, you can watch on uh, nasa.gov slash track Artemis any time of the day or night. The spacecraft is traveling 438 miles per hour.
as we grow closer to the moon and it continues to take up more and more of the frame, it's easier to make out some of those craters. And again, this is a view from a camera mounted on the tip of one of the wings of Orion's solar arrays. There are four solar arrays on Orion, and in total, they can generate about 11 kilowatts of power. This helps Orion uh, not rely on battery power the entire time and is a major difference between the Orion capsule and the Apollo capsules, whereas the Apollo capsules used fuel cells instead of solar arrays. We're now 6,700 miles away from the moon. Orion is traveling 456 miles per hour. Again, today we are covering the outbound powered flyby currently scheduled for two hours and less than 14 minutes from now. That'll be at 7.44 a.m. Eastern time. We'll be targeting that close up, closest approach at 7.57 a.m. when Orion will be about 80 miles above the lunar surface. Outbound powered flyby is a two minute and 30 second burn. This is the uh, longest planned burn for Orion until the return powered flyby. Currently targeted at about three and a half minutes. While the outbound powered flyby burn sets us up for the distant retrograde insertion maneuver, the return powered flyby will instead prepare us and put us on the proper trajectory for our splashdown.
less than two hours and eight minutes until the outbound powered flyby burn. The outbound powered flyby burn is scheduled for 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time when Orion will be 328 statute miles above the moon, traveling at 5,023 miles per hour. That's in contrast to the current positioning. Orion is 6,400 miles away from the moon, traveling 487 miles per hour. At the time of closest approach, Orion will be 81 statute miles above the moon, traveling at 5,101 miles per hour. Again, we're tracking closest approach for 6.57 a.m. Central Time, 7.57 a.m. Eastern. And even though Orion will be passing around the far side of the moon today, we are currently at 233,349 miles away from Earth. This will not be our greatest distance from Earth during the mission. That will occur when Orion is in the distant retrograde orbit on next Monday, November 28th at 3.05 p.m. Central Time, 4.05 p.m. Eastern at 268,552 miles. Again, everything on track for the outbound powered flyby burn today at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. Orion now less than 6,300 miles away from the moon, moving at almost 500 miles per hour. This view is from the nasa.gov slash track Artemis site. You can join this site at any time throughout the mission. We uh, are keeping you updated 24-7 as we uh, continue our journey around the moon and back to Earth. You'll be able to track the velocity, distance from the Earth, and distance to the moon at any time you choose. If you're just joining us, you're watching a live view of our one and only moon. This view coming from a camera on the tip of one of Orion's four solar arrays. The spacecraft now 6,220 miles away from our closest celestial neighbor, traveling 507 miles per hour. Orion launched atop the SLS on November 16th at 1.47 a.m. Eastern Time. This is an uncrewed flight test. However, we do have some purposeful passengers on board. 
One of those is Munikin Campos, uh, named after Arturo Campos, who was a valuable um, player during the Apollo 13 mission in Mission Control Houston. Commander Munikin Campos is a mannequin that will allow us to measure radiation, acceleration, and vibration data throughout the mission. The info gathered from him and the uh, other two phantom mannequins, Helga and Sohar, will help us prepare for future crewed missions. We're now two hours from the outbound powered flyby burn. Orion is 6,034 miles away from the moon. We've already increased, uh, we, are, we have already grown 1,000 miles closer since when we began our broadcast this morning just 30 minutes ago. We've also continued to increase in velocity, now 530 miles per hour for the spacecraft on the maiden voyage of Artemis 1. At the time of the OPF burn at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time, Orion will be traveling at 5,023 miles per hour. The mission management team gave the go for Orion to conduct the outbound powered flyby maneuver on Saturday during their daily meeting. Teams are tracking no issues that would prevent the spacecraft from entering into distant retrograde orbit.
5,800 miles away from the moon and continuing to grow closer as we prepare for the outbound power flyby burn targeted for 7.44 a.m. Central Time. Again, the outbound powered flyby burn is the first of a pair of maneuvers that we need to enter that distant retrograde orbit beyond the moon. Today's burn at 744 will bring Orion closest to the moon, about 80 miles above it, at 757 a.m. Eastern Time. We also expect to lose communication with the spacecraft as it passes behind the moon for 34 minutes starting at 7.26 a.m., but we will stay on air until it reemerges and we regain communications. It will be with the Goldstone Ground Station as part of NASA's Deep Space Network. Orion entered the lunar sphere of influence yesterday at 2.09 p.m. Eastern Time. That means the moon instead of the Earth is the main gravitational force acting on the spacecraft. Additionally, this morning, Orion completed the fourth outbound trajectory correction burn. These are pre-planned burns to keep Orion on course throughout the mission, and that fourth burn was executed at 7.44 a.m., oh, sorry, 1.44 a.m. Eastern Time. We are targeting 7.44 a.m. for the outbound powered flyby.
now just 5,520 miles from the moon and approaching. Again, this is nasa.gov slash track Artemis. You can keep up with Orion's mission and uh, its location during the flight at any time. We continue to increase in velocity as well, now approaching 600 miles per hour. And at the time of the outbound-powered flyby burn, we'll be traveling at 5,023 miles per hour. Outbound-powered flyby burn will be executed at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time, one hour and 47 minutes from now. Six AM Eastern Time and we are now one hour and forty four minutes away from the outbound powered flyby burn. Orion is now five thousand three hundred thirty five miles away from the moon and continuing to grow closer 
traveling 619 miles per hour. Again, you're watching live coverage ahead of the outbound powered flyby burn as we uh, prepare to make our closest approach to the moon. It'll be about 80 miles above the lunar surface. This is the second burn that was will be executed this morning. The first occurred successfully at 1.44 a.m. Eastern time. That was the OTC-4 burn, which stands for Outbound Trajectory Correction Burn, ensuring Orion is on the proper path for its future mission.
now approaching 4,900 miles away from the moon. Again, a large distance change in the time that we've been on air, less than an hour now. Uh, we originally started at over 7,000 miles away from the moon. We're traveling at 684 miles per hour. And just to put it in perspective, we are now 233,190 miles away from Earth. This is all in preparation for the outbound powered flyby burn. That'll be at 7.44 a.m. Eastern, one hour and 34 minutes from now. Teams are tracking no issues ahead of the outbound powered flyby burn. This is the first of two maneuvers that will uh, put us in the distant retrograde orbit beyond the moon. You're looking at a view from nasa.gov slash track Artemis, also known as Aero, the Artemis real-time orbit website. You can log on at any time, day or night, and any phase of the mission and check out what Orion is doing and where it is in relation to the moon and the Earth. You can see here we are now 4,722 miles from the moon and continuing to grow closer, traveling 715 miles per hour.
Now less than an hour and a half until the outbound powered flyby burn. Again, this is a two minute and 30 second burn. It'll take place around the far side of the moon and commits Orion to entry into distant retrograde orbit. There's a second part that's necessary, the distant retrograde insertion burn. That'll happen on Friday, November 25th, and that'll put us in the proper distant retrograde orbit. Now less than 4,500 miles away from the moon, continuing to grow closer ahead of the outbound powered flyby burn. Again, we're looking for that burn in an hour and 25 minutes from now, 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. Orion is traveling at 757 miles per hour. This is a live view from the spacecraft itself. It is from a camera mounted on one of the solar array wings. We will lose communication with the spacecraft as it passes behind the moon. That loss of communication will occur for approximately 34 minutes, and again, we're tracking that here. That loss of communication will start at 7.26 a.m., so one hour and seven minutes from now. We'll remain on air throughout the time that Orion is out of reach from our satellites here on Earth.
Orion is now 4,182 miles away from the moon, 233,089 miles away from our home of planet Earth. This is a live view uh, from the track Artemis or the NASA.gov slash track Artemis feature. It's a telemetry driven animation called Arrow, the Artemis real time orbit website that you can access anytime during the mission. That allows you to uh, keep a look at where Orion is and what phase of the mission it's in as well as take a look at what's coming up next for the spacecraft. What's coming up next this morning is the outbound powered flyby burn at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time, when Orion will be 328 statute miles above the moon. This prepares us for the closest approach at, at 7.57 a.m. Eastern Time, when Orion will be just 81 statute miles above our lunar neighbor. Currently, the spacecraft's traveling 824 miles per hour, and during the time of OPF, uh, the spacecraft will be traveling at 5,023 miles per hour.
We are now less than 4,000 miles away from the moon. Actually, 3,900 3, to be exact, traveling at 876 miles per hour. We are one hour and 12 minutes away from the outbound powered flyby burn, scheduled for 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. Everything on track for the burn this morning. At closest approach after the burn, we will be just 80 miles above the lunar surface. Again, this is an uncrewed flight test. We have no astronauts aboard the Artemis 1 mission. We're doing... We're doing this mission uh, in preparation for astronauts to fly aboard for Artemis II and our future missions in the Artemis program. Again, this is a telemetry-driven animation. You can track Artemis anytime at nasa.gov slash track Artemis through the Artemis Real-Time Orbit website, also known as Aero. That'll give you the stats on the spacecraft, as well as where we are during the mission. This is live any time of the day or night, so when we're not on air, you can still keep up with where Orion is.
At the start of our broadcast just an hour and 20 minutes ago, Orion was over 7,000 miles away from the moon. We're now coming up on 3,630 miles away from the moon, 233,000 miles away from Earth, and traveling at 940 miles per hour. That velocity has increased as well and will continue to do so. At the time of the OPF, or outbound powered flyby burn, at 7.44 a.m. Eastern, Orion will be traveling at over 5,023 miles per hour. We're tracking outbound powered flyby burn to take place one hour and six minutes from now. The go for that burn came two days ago from the mission management team when they met for their daily briefing.
Now one hour from the outbound powered flyby maneuver targeted for 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. Orion is 3,300 miles away from the moon, traveling 1,025 miles per hour. Thanks for joining us for our live coverage this morning. This is a live view from a camera on the tip of Orion's solar array wing aimed at our destination, the moon. We are now 3,098 miles away from the moon, traveling at 1,085 miles per hour, just 56 minutes away from the outbound powered flyby. That outbound powered flyby is targeted for 7.44 a.m. Eastern time. 
We're happy to have brought you this extended coverage this morning. And for now, I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Sandra Jones, to take you all the way through Outbound Powered Flyby. We're continuing to bring you live coverage of the upcoming outbound, outbound powered flyby of Orion now scheduled for 53 minutes and 30 seconds from now. Orion is already in the moon's sphere of influence. And yesterday the team completed a successful outbound trajectory correction burn. This burn helps set us up for the OPF burn, again, coming up in about 53 minutes from now. At the time of the OPF burn, Orion will be 328 statute miles above the moon. And then just a short time from then Orion will complete its closest approach to the moon at 81 miles above the lunar surface. Now, during this time, we will not have signal with Orion because it will be traveling behind the backside of the moon. However, we expect to regain communications once Orion swings back around to the other side and is back on the deep space network. The outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into what we call a distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical orbit around the moon, lasting about six days. Now, this orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon. It's about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit, which is actually 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13. And this will be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. This orbit is also called retrograde because Orion will be traveling around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around the Earth. This DRO provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space in order to put Orion's systems through its paces and to the tests in an environment far from Earth ahead of crewed flights.
Here in Mission Control Houston, things remain relatively calm now five hours five days, five hours since Orion's liftoff aboard the Space Launch System from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The next major milestone that we're tracking ahead of today's burn will be a go-no-go no go poll where Flight Director Rick Lebrode will poll the team here in Mission Control on key systems required for the upcoming burn. On your screen, you're continuing to get a live view of the moon taken from one of the solar array wing or saw cameras on board the Orion spacecraft. Orion is traveling at 1,248 miles per hour and is only 2,600 miles away from the moon at this time. Again, upon closest approach, Orion will be about 80 miles off of the surface of the moon. Now, we will be in that anticipated and expected loss of signal during that closest approach. However, we do expect to regain signal with Orion just about two minutes after the closest approach, where we will regain communications with the vehicle. If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage of today's upcoming outbound powered flyby burn, which will slingshot us around the backside of the moon. You are continuing to get views of the moon in real time here on your screen from a solar array wing camera on board Orion. Today's burn will take place with the Orbital Maneuvering System, or OMS, engine. This engine has been used several times throughout Orion's five-day journey to the moon. This is that large engine located on the bottom of the service module. And the engine can provide 6,000 pounds of thrust. 
Today's burn will last two minutes and 30 seconds, but the burn can be used for burns lasting up to 16 minutes in length. The OMS engine onboard Orion is a repurposed space shuttle orbital maneuvering system engine that has flown in space before. It flew on 19 space shuttle flights, beginning with STS-41G in October of 1984 and ending with STS-112 in October of 2002. Now, the OMS engine is not the only engine on board the Orion spacecraft. There are also eight auxiliary engines. These are located on the bottom of the service module in, as well, but in four sets of two. These are used to provide trajectory corrections and as a backup to the main engine, and each engine provides about 100 pounds of thrust. In total, there are 33 engines aboard Orion, and here on your screen you are getting a quick glimpse of planet Earth. We do expect to gain, regain those videos and imagery here shortly, but for now you're looking at a telemetry-driven animation of Orion and its location. As you can see here on your screen, speed continuing to pick up now at 1,369 miles per hour. Over 232,000 miles from home, but only 2,000 miles away from the moon. Again, at closest approach will be just over 80 miles above the lunar surface, continuing to close in on the backside of the moon. At this time, we're 15 minutes away from the planned go, no-go poll, where Flight Director Rick LeBrode will pull the team here in Mission Control ahead of today's upcoming outbound power to fly by burn. And you're looking at a live view inside Mission Control Houston. We're in the white flight control room today. There in the center of your screen who just sat down is Flight Director Rick LeBrode, who is leading the team here in Mission Control this morning. Sitting next to him is another Flight Director, Zeb Scoville. We'll have the opportunity to speak with Zeb here in just a few minutes about the upcoming burn.
Orion is now 2,000 miles away from the moon, continuing to close in on its destination for this particular burn, the backside of the moon. The outbound powered flyby is the goal of today's operation. This outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical orbit around the moon, which will last about six days. Following this, Orion will perform a similar maneuver called the return powered flyby, which will put it on the trajectory to return back to Earth ahead of a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. Now, the first time a NASA vehicle flew behind the backside of the moon with crew on board was first done during Apollo 8. And here you are looking at a live view of the Orion spacecraft from the solar array wing with the moon in the distance of the screen, the Earth in the distant frame of the screen, and the moon up close. Again, we are now less than 2,000 miles away from the moon but over 200,000 miles away from planet Earth. Orion started its journey five days ago from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it launched aboard the Space Launch System. Orion has been traveling to the moon ever since, performing checkouts of its systems, as this is an uncrewed test flight. It's critical that NASA tests out the hardware and systems aboard Orion ahead of flying a crew on board Artemis II.
Good morning and welcome to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. I'm NASA's Sandra Jones and we're bringing you live coverage from Mission Control Houston of the upcoming outbound powered flyby in which Orion will fly behind the moon and perform a burn utilizing the orbital maneuvering system engine, which was checked out on Tuesday following launch of Orion atop the space launch system. The engine has been performing well and has completed a series of additional expected trajectory correction burns, and all spacecraft systems are performing well now over five days into the flight of Artemis 1. Today, we're in the white flight control room where flight director Rick Lebrode is leading the team on console for today's flyby and burn. Just moments ago, flight director Rick Lebrode pulled the team here in mission control, and we are go for the OPF burn. We do expect to lose signal of Orion as it travels behind the backside of the moon, as the moon will be blocking the direct sight to the deep space network. We're tracking that loss of signal to begin just about 10 minutes from now at 6.25 a.m. Central and will last just over 34 minutes. While in the loss of signal, the outbound powered flyby will take place with the orbital maneuvering system engine at 6.44 a.m. Central. The outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical orbit around the moon, lasting about six days. At this time, Orion is only 1,600 miles away from the moon. And you see this view on your screen as Orion continues to approach the backside of the moon, now traveling at over 1,776 miles per hour. And on the lower middle of your screen, you do see that's us, that's home. 232,000 miles away from Earth. Orion launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida five days ago. And we are now 25 minutes away from the outbound powered flyby maneuver. Today's burn will occur with the Orbital Maneuvering System, or OMS engine, which has been used several times already in Orion's flight. The OMS engine is located on the bottom of the service module and is the largest engine aboard Orion. It can provide 6,000 pounds of thrust and is equipped to help steer the spacecraft and can be used in some abort cases if necessary to safely return Orion to Earth. Now, today's burn will last for 2 minutes and 30 seconds, but the Ohms engine can fire for up to 16 minutes. The Ohms engine is a repurposed Space Shuttle Orbital Maneuvering System engine that has flown in space several times before, 19 times in fact, beginning on Space Shuttle Flight STS-41G in October of 1984 and ending with STS-112 in October 2002. Now, just about five minutes from now, we do expect to lose signal from Orion as it travels behind the moon. That loss of signal will last for 34 minutes. However, once Orion emerges from the backside of the moon and regains communications on the deep space network, we do expect to regain communications with the vehicle. The burn will occur at 6.44 a.m. Central while we are in that loss of signal and we'll also have the closest approach at that time period when we are in the loss of signal as well. That closest approach at 6.57 a.m. Central when Orion will be just 81 miles above the lunar surface.
Again, if you're just joining us, you are looking at a view from the solar array wing or SAW camera on board the Orion spacecraft, which is five days into its mission, just 1,400 miles away from the moon. We'll continue to see the moon grow larger in the frame here in the next couple of minutes before we do lose signal from Orion as it flies behind the moon. Now you are seeing the Earth, you are seeing home, you are seeing yourself in that image right there as Orion is 232,000 miles away from planet Earth. Now less than four minutes away from our expected loss of signal as Orion travels behind the moon. While behind the moon, Orion will perform the outbound powered flyby, which the team here in Mission Control is ready for. Flight Director Rick Lebrode pulled the team. Everyone is pulling go. Everything still on track for the outbound powered flyby burn. Now 20 minutes away. This outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical around the moon, which will last about six days. Now, this is different than what was done during the Apollo program when the spacecraft orbited much closer to the moon. Now, this orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon. It's about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit. This is actually 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13 and will be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. This orbit is called retrograde because Orion will travel around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around Earth. Distant retrograde orbit provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space and allows the opportunity to put Orion's systems to the test in an environment far from Earth. We are now less than two minutes away from our anticipated loss of signal as Orion travels behind the moon. As we continue to get live views here for the next minute or so, we will potentially see the Earth start to go just behind the moon as Orion travels behind the moon. We will not have Earth views, of course, because the moon will be blocking the Orion spacecraft. However, we do anticipate an acquisition of signal at 6.59 a.m. Central. It's about a 34 minute loss of signal, at which point we hope to regain communications with the spacecraft. Five seconds away from our anticipated loss of signal. 
and we do have loss of signal. Again, this is a 33, 34 minute, four second loss of signal. Orion is now behind the moon and we are in a period of anticipated loss of signal. This is because the moon is blocking the signal to the deep space network. We are looking ahead to the outbound powered flyby burn, which will take place with the orbital maneuvering system in s less than 17 minutes from now at 6.44 a.m. Central. If you're just joining us, Orion continues to fly behind the moon. We are now 31 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of signal. And just 15 minutes away from today's outbound powered flyby. So as we continue to make our way behind the moon, we do have that anticipated loss of signal that we've been discussing. But right now, I do have a very special guest joining me. We have NASA Flight Director Zeb Scoville, who is going to chat with us a little bit about this moment, what it means to him, and what we can look forward to upcoming. So Zeb, I can't imagine how special this moment must feel. Tell me a little bit about what this is like. This is uh, one of those days that you've been thinking about and dreaming about for a long, long time. Uh, I remember when I was a kid just dreaming about being an astronaut and going to work at NASA. And when I got here, we were flying shuttle and we were building a space station and flying it. And, you know, that is an incredible vehicle, but on the horizon was always how humanity was going to get back to the moon. And, and this morning, we just saw the Earth set behind the moon as we take the next human-rated vehicle around the moon preparing to bring humans back there within a few years this is this is a game changer absolutely and so we are behind the moon as you said right now and this is important because we have a burn upcoming the OPF burn can you talk to us a little bit about what that burn is the purpose of it and why it's important yeah the out 
bound powered flyby is the name of the burn. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, adjust the trajectory of Orion. So as we've been flying towards it from Earth, we're going to loop around behind it, use the gravity to sort of give us a boost. And then this burn will put us into a trajectory that brings us out to what's called a distant retrograde orbit. So this is about a 50,000 mile orbit above the surface of the moon where uh, we can get set up in a stable orbit. We're actually going to spend several days in that orbit uh, before we come back around the, the um, moon once again and do a, another burn on the return end to bring us back towards Earth. Great. Well, we're really looking forward to that burn. It's now just about 12 minutes away. Everything still uh, go, go for that burn, which is great news. Now, I think the question on everyone's mind is the next time we do this, we're going to have crew on board. So how is that going to be different or is it going to be different? Yeah, I mean, the crew really puts human in, in the human space flight, right? And that's the whole reason why we're doing this is to get uh, – get humanity back on the surface of the moon. There's just an incredible amount that we have to learn. This is not like um, uh, Apollo. This is not a repeat of Apollo. What we're going to do and the architectures we're going to be setting up, the locations we're going to go to are going to really unlock uh, a lot of the, the capabilities of the moon, the research on the moon, ability to go explore beyond the moon and, and the solar system onto Mars. There's areas of the South Pole that will uh, have um, volatile resources locked ice from 4.6 billion years ago. Last time I checked, the recipe for ice was hydrogen and oxygen, which, by the way, is also rocket fuel, and you can breathe it, and you can drink it, and um, it really uh, enables sort of a long-term architecture on the moon. And so this is the first step. When we come back with crew on, on Artemis II, they're going to be doing a, a real uh, crew test rundown of the vehicle, testing all the life support systems and making sure they function with the human in the loop elements of it. And so that mission will, will bring it and, and do a short flyby of the moon before it comes back, and then Artemis three will get us onto the surface. And we are really looking forward to that. But first, today's OPF burn. So I really appreciate you taking some time to chat with me about this. I know you're very busy, so I'll let you get back to your console position. Um, but really, thank you so much, Seb. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We're now less than 10 minutes away from today's outbound powered flyby burn. As you see in this graphic on your screen that is driven by real-time telemetry, we are about 830 miles away from the moon. Now we do not have signal with Orion right now because the moon is blocking its ability to communicate with the deep space network. However, we do anticipate regaining the communication with Orion in about 25 minutes from now. But before then will be the moment we've all been waiting for, the OPF burn, which is slated to occur at 6.44 a.m. Central, just eight minutes from now.
We're now 23 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of Signal with Orion. Again, the vehicle continues to fly behind the moon. It is now 764 miles above the lunar surface, but at the time of closest approach will be 81 miles above the surface. Now, we do have the outbound powered flyby burn coming up in about six minutes and 40 seconds from now. But this maneuver was first done during Apollo 8 on Christmas Eve 54 years ago. Apollo 8 was the first crewed spacecraft to leave low Earth orbit and the first human spaceflight to reach the moon. The crew of Frank Borman, James Lovell, and Bill Anders orbited the moon 10 times without landing before splashing down on December 27, 1968. While Apollo 8 completed 10 orbits around the moon, about 60 miles above the surface. Once Orion emerges from the far side of the moon, it will slingshot out to distant retrograde orbit about 30,000 miles away from the Earth. This orbit is critical for key tests and to evaluate how Orion performs in deep space. And this will be the furthest any human rated spacecraft will have ever traveled away from Earth. But for now, let's take a quick look back on that historic Apollo 8 mission now. Well, Apollo 8 originally was an Earth orbital mission exercising the lunar module. But the lunar module was way behind. The people in NASA came up with the idea of moving Apollo 8 to a lunar orbital mission. Why don't we send the command service module of Apollo 8 to orbit the moon, and we can learn a lot about the communication system, the navigation system, how the moon's gravity would affect the uh, orbiting spacecraft, look for suitable landing spots. Well, I got into the big Saturn V. This would be the first time that man had actually launched on a Saturn V. So I thought to myself after this four months of heavy training, I said, you yeah, know, I'm actually gonna go to the moon. We had orbited the Earth, first of all, to check our spacecraft out. Then when everything was lined and the spacecraft looked fine to go to the moon, we lit the third stage for a second time. Trajectory and guidance are go, over. We could actually coast all the way to the moon. And after a while, you could look back and see the Earth getting smaller and smaller. People on Earth tend to call the, the far side of the moon the dark side, but that's a misnomer. Uh, on our flight, the moon was between the Earth and the sun, the far side was lit by the sun. Uh, we saw the far side. You know, we we're like three school kids looking through a candy store window, I guess, just staring at the unnamed craters as they slowly passed us by. Uh, we were busy shooting uh, pictures of lunar surface for uh, lunar landing sites uh, for uh, upcoming uh, lunar landings. And then suddenly I looked out the window and here was this gorgeous orb coming up and I thought holy moly and there over the lunar landscape was the earth the earth was beautiful it was the only thing in the whole universe that had any color I had fought to have a, a long lens and color film I didn't have a light meter just banged off a, a dozen or so pictures changing the f-stop each click I put my thumb up to the window of the spacecraft and I could completely hide the Earth behind my thumb. The Earth is a mere speck in the Milky Way galaxy. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good Earth. If you're just joining us, Orion is currently behind the moon and we are in a period of anticipated loss of signal as the moon blocks the signal of the deep space network. We are looking ahead to the outbound powered flyby burn, which will take place with the orbital maneuvering system about two minutes from now at 6.44 a.m. Central. At this time, Orion is about 670 miles above the lunar surface. During its time of closest approach, Orion will be about 81 miles above the surface of the moon.
We're now one minute and 45 seconds away from today's outbound powered flyby burn. This burn will last for two minutes and 30 seconds. This burn will occur with Orion's Orbital Maneuvering System, or OMS engine, which was successfully checked out on Tuesday following the liftoff of Orion aboard the Space Launch System from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The OMS engine performing spectacularly so far. While this is the first flight for the OMS engine as a part of the Artemis program, it actually flew on 19 space shuttle flights, beginning with STS-41G in October 1984 and ending with STS-112 in October 2002. We're now just 40 seconds away from the OMS engine getting to flex its firing capabilities on the backside of the moon. Less than 30 seconds until today's burn. Fifteen seconds until the burn begins. and we anticipate the outbound powered flyby burn to have begun. Again, because we are behind the backside of the moon, we do not have communications with the Orion spacecraft just yet, but we do anticipate acquiring that signal in 15 minutes and 50 seconds from now. At that time, we should be able to evaluate performance of the OPF burn and have some more information about how the burn went. 30 seconds into the burn, two minutes remaining in today's outbound powered flyby burn. One minute into the outbound powered flyby burn. This outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into that distant retrograde orbit. Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical orbit around the moon, lasting about six days. This orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon. It's about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit, which is actually 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13 and will be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. 30 seconds remaining in today's burn. Now, once in this distant retrograde orbit, the orbit will, is called distant, is called retrograde because Orion will travel around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around Earth. Distant retrograde orbit provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space in order to put Orion's systems to the test in an environment far from Earth. and the outbound powered flyby burn should be complete. And we are less than 14 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of our signal with Orion.
The next milestone we'll look ahead towards in our coverage today is when Orion will complete its closest approach to the lunar surface. In 10 minutes from now, Orion will be flying 81 miles above the lunar surface. That closest approach occurring at 6.57 a.m. Central, 7.57 a.m. Eastern. Then just two minutes from the time of closest approach, we do anticipate our acquisition of signal. If you're just joining us, the Orion spacecraft is currently flying behind the moon. We are in a period of loss of signal due to the fact that the moon is blocking Orion's ability to communicate with the deep space network. But we do anticipate gaining signal on the deep space network in 11 minutes and 30 seconds from now. At 6.44 a.m. Central Time, Orion's orbital maneuvering system engine completed a 2 minute and 30 second burn. This burn is called the outbound powered flyby burn. Now again, because we are behind the moon, we will not be able to have data from the Orion spacecraft to evaluate how the burn performance was, but we do expect to learn a little bit more about that once we come back behind the moon. On this graphic you see on your screen, that is, of course, the Orion spacecraft. And the large engine that you see in the middle of the spacecraft there is the orbital maneuvering system. That was the engine that just performed the burn. We anticipate that burn to have lasted 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The OMS engine or orbital maneuvering system engine provides 6,000 pounds of thrust and can steer the spacecraft and can be used in some abort cases to safely return Orion to Earth. And in this animation, you're also seeing some of the auxiliary engines on board Orion. These are all also located on the bottom of the service module in four sets of two. Each of these engines provides about 100 pounds of thrust. There are also 24 smaller engines grouped into six pods which provide attitude control for Orion. They can be fired individually as needed to move the spacecraft in different directions and rotate it into different positions. So in total, the service module has 33 engines. But today's burn, again, we anticipate to have been, we anticipate the burn to have occurred with the orbital maneuvering system or OMS engine.
We are now five minutes away from Orion's closest approach to the lunar surface. As Orion continues to travel behind the moon, we are still in a period of anticipated loss of signal as the moon blocks the signal to the deep space network. We are anticipating the acquisition of signal in less than seven minutes from now. At 6.44 a.m. Central, just about nine minutes and 30 seconds ago, commands were sent for the outbound powered flyby burn to occur with the orbital maneuvering system engine or OMS engine on board Orion, which sends Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one half elliptical orbit around the moon, which will last about six days. The orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon, which is about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit. This will be 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13 and will also be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. The orbit is called retrograde because Orion will travel around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around Earth. Distant retrograde orbit provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space in order to put Orion's systems to the test in an environment far from Earth. Now this orbit is different than the orbit done during the Apollo program in which the spacecraft and its crew orbited much closer to the lunar surface in a more circular fashion. Distant retrograde orbit is important because it helps us to learn about how a spacecraft functions in a deep space environment. As part of the Artemis program, the Gateway program is building a small human-tended space station which will orbit the moon and provide extensive capabilities to support NASA's Artemis campaign. Gateway's capabilities for supporting sustained exploration and research in deep space include docking ports for a variety of visiting spacecraft, space for crew to live and work, and onboard science investigations to study heliophysics, human health, and life sciences, among other areas. We are expecting the acquisition of signal to occur in four minutes from now.
At this time, we do expect Orion to be completing its closest approach to the lunar surface. Orion should be just about 81 miles above the surface of our closest celestial neighbor. At this time of closest approach, Orion flying at a lunar latitude of 6.5 degrees and a lunar longitude of 120 degrees. Orion is fairly close to the equator at this time. Now just two minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of signal. One minute and 30 seconds until the anticipated acquisition of signal. Again, Orion is currently flying behind the backside of the moon, having completed its closest approach at 6.57 a.m. Central, just 81 miles above the lunar surface. Less than 30 minutes, 30 seconds rather, until our anticipated acquisition of signal. The mood certainly a bit suspenseful here in Mission Control as we await to Orion to emerge from the backside of the moon. We're standing by for acquisition of signal. And we do have confirmation of an acquisition, acquisition of signal on the deep space network in Goldstone. This view on your screen of planet Earth taken from Orion's solar array wing camera or saw camera.
standing on the shoulders of the giants of the Apollo generation, Orion now carries forward the torch of the Artemis generation as it emerges from behind the moon and earthrise of our pale blue dot and its eight billion human inhabitants now coming into view. With the successful acquisition of Signal from the Orion spacecraft, the team here in Mission Control, Houston, will evaluate the spacecraft systems to evaluate performance of the outbound powered flyby burn, which occurred 18 minutes and 50 seconds ago. And you're looking at this view on your screen from the Orion spacecraft as it looks back at planet Earth having launched just five days ago. Orion is now over 230,000 miles away from Earth. Orion emerged from the backside of the moon just minutes ago after completing the outbound powered flyby burn. That burn occurring 21 minutes ago. While behind the moon, Orion completed its closest approach to the moon at a distance of 80 miles above the surface.
and you're looking at a live view inside the Orion spacecraft. This is, of course, an uncrewed test flight, but we do have a couple of purposeful passengers that have hopped a ride on board Orion. You're looking at one there on the left of your screen. That is a Moonikin wearing the Orion crew survival suit. This is the space this is the space suit that crew will wear during dynamic phases of flight once we do have a crew on board particularly during launch and entry situations The AUX, or Orion Crew Survival Suit, can help keep astronauts alive if Orion were to lose cabin pressure during the journey out to the moon. Orion is, the AUX rather, is equipped to up to six days of life support systems as the crew makes their way back to Earth. And as part of this uncrewed test flight, there's a variety of sensors and data that will be pulled from the Orion Crew Survival Suit to inform further design ahead of crewed flight test as part of Artemis II.
And this view of our home planet taken from 229,000 miles away from the Orion spacecraft following its outbound powered flyby burn behind the moon. At its closest approach, Orion flew 81 miles above the lunar surface. We're now five days, six hours, and 27 minutes into the historic flight of Artemis I. The Orion spacecraft just recently emerged from the backside of the moon after completing the outbound powered flyby. Coming up at MET, five days, six hours, and 52 minutes, which is about 54 minutes after the OPF burnout. Orion is slated to fly extremely close to the Apollo 11 landing site. The Apollo 11 landing site, named Tranquility Base, was where Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin touched down on July 20th, 1969, 53 years ago. As Orion continues to swing around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit, we were just getting some views of the Earth from about 220,000 miles away. We do expect to get those views again here momentarily, but you are looking at a live view inside Mission Control Houston, where NASA Flight Director Judd Freeling is leading the team on console.
33 minutes ago, Orion completed the outbound powered flyby burn, which lasted 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which sent Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Next up for Orion will be in will be insertion into distant retrograde orbit where it will remain for one half long elliptical orbit around the moon. This period will last about days. Following this, Orion will complete a similar maneuver in which it flies behind the moon in a return power flyby. And as you might expect, it's just the opposite of the outbound powered flyby. This maneuver will help put Orion on a trajectory to return back to Earth and splash down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. And another view of the flight director on console today during today's operations, Rick Labrode. And coming in to your view on your screen right there in the red jacket is the Johnson Space Center Senate Director, Vanessa Weish.
And if you're just joining us, Orion has emerged from the backside of the moon after completing the outbound powered flyby 42 minutes ago. This burn lasted two minutes and 30 seconds and sent Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Once inserted in the distant retrograde orbit, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one half elliptical orbit around the moon. This will last about six days.
We're just six minutes away from the anticipated flyover of the Apollo 11 landing site, Tranquility Base. We anticipate that flyover to occur at 7.37 a.m. Central. During the flyover, Orion will be 1,384 statute miles above the landing site. And you are looking at a live view inside Mission Control Houston, where NASA Flight Director Rick LeBrode is on console, leading the team here in Mission Control following the outbound powered flyby burn, which occurred 49 minutes ago. This two minute and 30 second burn utilized the orbital maneuvering system or OMS engine on board the Orion spacecraft and help set the stage for descent retrograde insertion. We're now two minutes away from the anticipated flyover of the Apollo 11 landing site, Tranquility Base. Orion will be 1,384 statute miles above the landing site.
And at this time, we do expect Orion to be f flying over the Apollo 11 landing site at Tranquility Base. Orion is 1,384 statute miles above the landing site. Tranquility Base was where Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon for the very first time on July 20th, 1969, 53 years ago.
and with the outbound powered flyby burn now complete and Orion having completed its closest approach to the moon at a distance of 80 miles above the surface. That will wrap up our coverage for today, but we'll continue to post daily updates about the mission on the Artemis blog at blogs.nasa.gov slash Artemis. And we'll also be posting updates on our social media accounts as well. Later today, we'll have a briefing at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, where representatives from NASA will discuss the outbound powered flyby, which we hope you'll tune in for. And we'll be live on NASA TV covering the distant retrograde orbit insertion Friday beginning at 3.30 p.m. Central, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston.